I have um, titled this message, Seasons of War. Seasons of War. Accompany me if you want to go with me to Ecclesiastes 3. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I'm Spanish, so some of my words are not going to come right, but bear with me. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And is a as the scripture goes, it starts comparing the different things that there is a season for. But I, I want you to look at number eight. It says, a time for a time of war and a time of peace. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about a specific season in our lives. Just like the weather changes in seasons, we also change. The times where we are living today. Uh, we have heard a lot of commotion of war, um, a lot of things going on that we have never seen before. And why? We are in times of war. Just in case you haven't noticed, <laughs> we are in times of war. And around the world there's a lot of chaos going around. And here in the United States, there's a lot of stuff going around. Mm -hmm. So we no longer look at other part of the world where it's very close to us. Yes, and I am referring to a, spirit, a spiritual world. Not just a physical world, but a spiritual world. Not the one that we have been seeing around where everyone is fighting among themselves. We have believers against non-believers. Um, we have churches against churches, and so on and so forth. Not the physical word I'm talking about, but the spiritual word. Where we see religion against religion. No, this is not the type of battle we are supposed to be fighting. We know that while the world continues to be entertained in things that are, are little, has a little importance, the enemy has been advancing, mm -hmm. taking ground for his plan. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, many Christians are focused on the wrong things mm -hmm. and has forgotten that it should be clear to us that we are not from this world. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are not to be focused on the things of this world because we're not from here. It's hard because we live in it for the time being, right? But, but we have to maintain our focus on what is important. It's temporarily. And we focus has to be in God. We are, supposed, we are supposed to put our eyes in God and in God only. The things around us, like I said, are going to pass like everything else. For God is forever. It is not easy because we live in this world. But if we learn who we are in Christ, and every day who we are in Christ, we will understand the power we have in Christ. Amen. If every day we arm ourselves with the armor of God, the enemy will not be able to advance his plan in our lives. Amen. Amen. There is a lot of changes happening in the spiritual realm that we are able to manifest in the physical in these days. We have a lot of things happening that sometimes when we hear the news and we hear see what is going on around us, we might not understand it. But we have to have, we need to have, be clear in something, that there is a, a spiritual world that is very real, that is around us, that moves around us. And there's things happening that in the spiritual world has already, is already happening, but we don't see it. 
but it's now we, we, we now see the, the stuff happening in the physical. That's why we see so many uh, uh, uproar going on around us. Like the scripture says, there is a season for everything. There is a season to be passive. And we all go through these seasons. Those seasons where we know, well, everything is going okay. Everything is fine. And we're passive. We, we, we think that everything is good. But just be alert. It doesn't stay like that. Amen. Changes are coming. Yes. And we have to be prepared for that. And, but we need to be able to know that there is times that we have to be active. That we have to put the passiveness aside mm -hmm. and we have to active ourselves in God. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Matthew 11, 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, Amen. the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, mm. and the violent take it by force. That's right. Can we think on anything that is happening right now that will show us this violence? A lot of things, right? A lot of things happening right now around us. A lot of violence happening. What kind of force is this one that the word uh, the Matthew 11, 12 is talking about. This is a spiritual for, uh, uh, force. I'm sorry. Yes. The scripture says that the vial take it how? By force. By force. Yes. These are the ones that get on their knees. Yes. And this is how we fight. Yes. This is how we take it by force. Yes. It's not in the physical. It's not with our own hands, but it's in a more powerful way. Yes. <laughs> that when we understand that, we can nothing can stop us because God is with us. Yes. The scripture says the Bible take it by force. Mm -hmm. These are the people that get on their knees every day. Mm -hmm. The ones that surrender all to God. The ones that stand in the God for others. Those that are selfless and have faith in God. Those that understand He is in control of our lives. That no matter what is going on around us, we know a God. A powerful God that is in total control of our lives. God has deposit authority on us. When we made a decision to accept Him as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came to your life, come to you, and give us power. Yes. You have that power. If you have accepted God as your Lord and Savior, you have to understand that you have power in Christ. Yes. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So it's not me saying it, but God says it. And if you got sense, then why can't we believe that? Mm -hmm. Once we understand the power and authority that is within us, we will have the boldness and the fire to go and fight. Mm -hmm. It's important that we understand this power that we have in Christ. We must prepare ourselves with the word of God. This is the sword, right? Prayer and fasting. That will give us the discernment to be effective in this fight. No soldier goes to, war, to battle with our weapons. We must prepare. There is a, a, in this fight that I'm talking about, this spiritual fight, like soldiers go to war with their arms and all these things are prepared, right? They go prepared. If, what would happen if they go unprepared? <laughs> there is a spiritual world that is constantly busy 
and moving to advance the kingdom of the enemy. Just know that. It doesn't stop. It's well organized. And if they're well organized, we have to organize ourselves. Because they have everything lined up on how and when and, and with who is going to happen. So we must prepare. But we cannot give too much importance on that kingdom, that organized kingdom of the enemy. It is real, exists. But there is one kingdom that is even more power, has even more power than their kingdom. Amen? That kingdom is the kingdom of God. Yes. That kingdom that is also well prepared. Yes. That kingdom that has already won. Yes. Amen. Yes. And we, as childs of God, as people of God, we must take our place. Take authority of God has given us. And position ourselves to fight. Ephesians 6.12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, yes. but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. So God has advised us, has told us, this is not something that we should be ignorant to, that there is this uh, a, a spiritual word, that this is uh, what we're fighting against. And we cannot come against these um, um, principalities and against the powers and against uh, the rulers of darkness, against spiritual hosts of wickedness of the heaven in heavenly places. We cannot come with just us mm -hmm. because we will lose. That's right. We only have power and authority in Christ. Mm -hmm. We don't have it on our own. And if we don't have Christ in our life, you cannot fight. There is nothing you will be able to do on your own strength, Amen. on your own wisdom. Amen. That's why we constantly have to be praying for wisdom. We have to constantly be praying for, for the Holy Spirit to fill us. Because when the Holy Spirit fills us, there is come power. There is come authority. There is come discernment to understand what's going around us. This confirms what I said, that there is a spiritual world that is constantly attacking and looking to rob, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. This is the plan of the enemy for our family. Yes. This is the plan of the enemy for you yes. and for me. Okay. But God has a better plan. Yes. God has one that that is for good. Yes. That's, that is for eternity. Yes. Because when he comes from his church, for his church, we want to go with him. Yes. We are his church. Yes. So we need to make sure that we are ready. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Approximately, approximately <laughs> a month a month ago, I have I had a dream. And in, the, in this dream, um, I was seeing myself with a big sword. And I saw my two children behind me, my two daughters. It was it was not in a specific place. All I remember me with the sword, and I don't have them behind me. Mm -hmm. And as I look at the sword, and I look up, I see these demons that were coming towards me. And not even, I would say confused, but it was an immediate reaction as they came close to me to stab them with that sword. Amen. 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 And I got up like, oh, my heart is racing and I'm like, oh my God, what do you, why are you telling me with this dream? Because I believe that dreams have meanings. They do. We Absolutely. believe that God speaks to us Amen. through our dreams. Amen. And something was clear to me. The sword was the word of God. Mm -hmm. my, my daughters behind me, not only for them, but it was my family. And I understood God was giving me an alert. Mm -hmm. It's time for battle. Mm -hmm. 
something is coming. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that it's always something yeah. coming. Yeah. But God, in His mercy and His love, prepare us. Yeah. Speak to you ahead of time so you are prepared. Yeah. Amen. Amen. For weeks, I start hearing the word of seasons. I say, oh, seasons. I uh, will be stalking on, on my job and we will talk and, and all of a sudden the word of season will come out. Amen. One day I'm in my office and, and, I'm, and, and the word keep coming to me. And then my coworkers start playing a song. And how was the title of the song was? This is my season. And I start singing the song and I'm going where I learn it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, a lot of it. And she looked at me and she said, do you know this song? I said, no, <laughs> never heard it. <laughs> but has ministered to me at that point. It was like, like the words got impregnated in my heart. Amen. And I start, I was, I'm working and I'm typing away and I'm singing the song. And she would look at me and say, Really, you, you didn't know the song? I said, no, I did not know the song, but, but it's an amazing song. Mm -hmm. And every time, every morning in, the sh in, in my office, we'll talk about seasons for any, one way or the other. What happened one day, I come to church. We are here, and the pastor had a word for me from God. And the first thing that I remember, he said, Maritza, this is your season. And I opened my eyes, and, and, and I probably, he didn't notice my reaction on my face, but it was, again, the confirmation of seasons. What kind of season? It was season four. It's the season. Why I'm telling you all this, God is sending us a message. It is time. It is the season to get in position to fight. The time is close. When our Lord will come back for his church. But we cannot be selfish and not take others with us. So I said to you, it is time. Amen. The fight, what is time? To fight for your family. Amen. To for your marriage. For the lost souls. It is time to fight for the sick. For those that are in chain and in bondage. For those that cannot pray for themselves, for those that can, that needs Jesus mm -hmm. as an emergency, as a 911 kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because many of these people that are in this need, desperate need, don't know how to get to Jesus. But us that know the truth, us, the child of God, has to understand that it's not about us. Thank you, Jesus. We are the army of God here on earth. Can you believe that? Yes. Can you believe that you are the army? Are you part of the army? I believe that I am. Yes. Amen. Amen. So many times we ask God to use us, and we say to God, God, I want to be your hands to heal the sick your feet to go to those places where there is a need, your mouthpiece to take your word to those that need to hear it. But in reality, I ask you, are you ready? Are we ready to do this? Are we really ready when we ask God? When we ask God, believe me, God is going to use you. He sure is. He's going to want to put you in positions for you to do those things. Because if this is the desire of your heart, and it's, it's for the will of God, then he will use us. Right. But we have to be oh, ready. Mm -hmm. oh. I confess to you that this word has ministered my heart first. As I went through and I started typing and I started looking at the words that God had put in my heart, it, it deeply worked in my heart. Because even though I passed... I, I had that dream, and, and God has speak to me in his grace and mercy. I know that there was things that he's telling me, you got to be ready. Yeah. There is no more time to waste. Mm -hmm. He was telling me, you need to get ready. And sometimes when there are busy times and days, goals and work and situations, family, and all these things coming our way, we forget those important things. Yes. 
to be ready. To be ready for, for what is ahead of us. We have to find new ways, new strategies that will help us be effective. It's time to get violent in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Yes. It is yes. not on our flesh. Yes. That's right. Judging those in sin, pointing finger at others, will not help us. That's right. That is what the world do. Mm -hmm. But we are not from this world. We are not. Amen. Oh, remember, we cannot let ourselves be like the world. We have to be the example. Amen. If God called us there's his son, and the, the, our, we are the child of God, when we came to Jesus, we are also part of him, of his kingdom. Amen. So we must be the example. We're supposed to be the guide for others, to show them the same mercy God showed us. In the time we got, in the in the times when God was with the apostle, He teach them by the example. Amen. Yeah. We should do the same. Amen. Matthew twenty eight sixteen to twenty says. And before, I want to say this: it is not about us anymore. God made it about us when he saved us. But now we have to make it about others. And this is the great mission. So we got to go back to the basics. Like we're learning in our Thursday class. Back to the basics. What was the great commission? Are we doing it? Because if we're not, we're running late. We got to start doing this. And Matthew 28 says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus has told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And certainly, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We have a promise here. He promised that if we are obedient to him, and we do this, that is, is, I believe in my heart, that is so important for God, the Great Commission, because this is what we're gonna be doing for him in earth. He used us, he, we are his army here. Even though we understand there is a, a mighty, um, a mighty um, um, warriors that we can't see around us. We are the ones walking in this earth. So through us, he can do this work. Through you and I, he can reach others. And some people will never step foot in our church. Their church will be you. Amen. And if you are the church, that's a big responsibility we're talking about. Because if, if, if people see church in us, what are they seeing? Big responsibility in our hands. Mm -hmm. And we have to be conscious of this. It's not about us anymore. It's not about us being ready and, 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 and waiting for, for the Lord to come to, to for his church. Us consider a church, but is the church doing what it's supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Are we really going with God? Are you sure that you will today, if God show up, up for his church, are you going with him? Because we cannot be in disobedience. And he will see our hearts. He will know. He's, he has a book over there in heaven where he has written every single thing we have done. That's right. And we'll be judged by that. Amen. So today, I'll say to you, are you ready for battle? Amen. And if we're not, if we're not ready, let's get ready. 
Because there's no more time to waste. Yes, right. There's no time to be waiting around. I'll pray tomorrow. I'll fast next week. Or I'll fast tomorrow. Or, or okay, I know the my my neighbors, my family is in, in difficulties. I'll pray for you. You said, are you praying for them? Because sometimes we just go ahead ourselves and say, oh, somebody comes to you and tell you something that they're going through, or, or you know because you can see that they're going through, and you tell them, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. I'm praying for you, but you forgot Amen. to pray. Mm -hmm. How many times has that happened to you? Oh, yeah. Amen. Many times. Amen. Many times. And it's, it's embarrassing. Yes, it is. Embarrassing that you see the person again and you will confront them. And with what face? Then you remember, oh my God, I told her I was praying for her and I did not. I believe that God today is just opening our eyes Amen. to a reality. And I pray to God that this as was meant to be an alert for myself. It will be an alert for you guys today. Because God needs his army. And you are the army. You are the people that he needs, that he's going to use to reach those that others cannot reach. Pastor says here many times, you know, you if you speak Spanish, then you're going to be reached those that speak Spanish. If you, you, you are able to do, or you came from a specific background, then you can relate to those people and he can use you there. Amen. So that means that it doesn't matter where you came from or where God take you out of, you are useful for him. Yes. You have a powerful testimony to share. Amen. You are able to talk to that person that is, is going through the same thing you were in, a, in the past and, 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 and truly said to that person, I know what you're going through. Amen. And they can only trust you because... Now you're sharing your testimony and they say, well, they truly know. They were there. They were there. They suffer what I'm suffering right now. And if God did for them, he can do for me. Amen. But it's not easy for me if I've never been in drugs, I don't know what they look like, to step in front of an addict and say, don't worry, I know what you're going through. God is going to take you out of that. He doesn't carry the same weight. Okay. You know, so we have our, our testimonies is is our, our one of the most powerful weapons we have. Amen. So don't be embarrassed or afraid to share it. God will allow you to share it at the right time with the right people in the right place. Amen. Just ask God for wisdom. God, God, ask God for boldness because sometimes we have so much in us. We have God have done so much for us that we can save so many others that not us, God through us mm -hmm. but, but we, we are afraid to open our mouth afraid to, to share with others because maybe you're still embarrassed about what you did in the past but guess what, God already forgave you so what the men think about you yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. It's right. it matters what God thinks about you yes, it matters, right. that's where what your focus has to be so if they judge you, oh well it was my past it was my past, and God already forgave me. And now I'm...